Hi, Jim here from RH Davy Welding Supplies. A uh, short video here showing how to configure this EWM uh, Phoenix Expert 330 machine to run with uh, aluminium wire. Uh, we've got a 1mm 4043 wire here and I'm just going to show how to uh, hook up the drive system to, uh, to, to, to work with that. Right, okay, we have uh, gear carriers, uh, four of them. The bottom ones uh, stay put. Um, the top ones had to be added if you decide you want to run aluminium wire. The, uh, the normal com um, configuration for solid wire would be uh, V-groove drive rollers and plain pressure rollers, which I'll, I'll cover in a, another video. Uh, anyway, you need to, uh, to fit the right drive roller and you need to get the right groove because there's two. You get a 1mm and a 1.2 on here, uh, U-groove top and bottom. Um, and what you need to do is look on the side and you can see some writing. This one says 1mm and the writing you can see relates to the groove that's in use and the groove that will be in use is the furthest one away from you. So if I fit the drive roll on the gear over these two little locating pegs uh, and I move the axle forwards and backwards to sort of centre it, I can drop it into its groove. Just undo that a bit more. And then if I reach around the back and turn it, I'll feel that it's locked in and engaged in its little keyway. There's a rounded end to the slot, almost exactly like a door key slot. And there's a spigot that has to drop in there, and there's nuts or flats on the back of the axle, and they engage with a little tab here to stop it rotating. If they're not in the right place, when you wind this down and you get that located correctly, the drive roll won't spin freely like that. It'll uh, it'll bind, which will cause you feeding issues. So I'll just uh, fit the other one. One mil groove facing, or one mil writing facing out. Same again. Drop it into the little slot. Wait for it to drop into its little locating tab. Then do this up. Now they do have uh, flaps on, which you uh, you can do up with a tool, but it's only a little M4 thread, so you want to be pretty uh, pretty gentle you don't want to go mad because you can strip them quite easily same here just slot the drive rolls onto their carriers into their little gear so into the little locating pegs pop this on here and we fit the retaining screws gentle nip Okay, and we're away. Right now, we're able to fit the uh, fit the liner. Now, this machine has been fitted with a Teflon liner, which goes all the way to the drive roll. You can see it coming out there. Um, we fit a, a thin wall brass sleeve to this liner to help protect it and keep it aligned. Uh, also helps to stop the end from getting chewed up if you do have a a misfeed or a uh, or a jam. That's removed like so, if you need to get this off for any reason. There's a little lock nut there, which, because it's squeezing down on a, on a brass collet here, onto a plastic liner, doesn't need to be done up with at all. There are flats on there for a spanner, but you can quite easily crush this liner by fitting that too tightly. So I'll just pop that back into place. This has all been cut to length already previously. Okay, I'll slot this back on. I tend to wrap this around like this, takes up some of the slack, stops it from getting snagged by things if you're moving the machine around. Now, the, uh, the plastic liner can be quite easily damaged by a sharp edge, which is exactly what you'll get if you just cut your wire off with side cutters, especially if they're not flush cut ones, uh, you tend to get a, a sharp edge. So what I do is I straighten, it will come off curved off the spool obviously, straighten the last few inches of wire, that helps it to find its way up where it needs to go inside the torch and remove the sharp edge from the end of the wire. You only need to do this when you feed it through for the first time unless you have a, a misset which causes you to have to cut the wire out and start again. Feed it through the intermediate guide and out into the liner itself and then you're ready to go. Now, you can press the inch button if the machine's turned on and push wire through um, and that works fine until it hits the other end and if there's any kind of uh, a misstep or a, or a jam it'll wrinkle it back here this is very thin wire it's very very soft it's 4043 
um, and it doesn't tend to find its way to exactly the right spot at the end of the torch first time every time there's a good chance you'll get a jam so I tend to feed it through by hand it takes a little bit longer but I always do this if I'm uh, fitting a liner for the first time just so I can tell whether there's any problems with it if there is and you're pushing it through by hand you'll definitely feel it so it takes a few minutes the wonders of television we can probably edit this out but nine times out of ten you do this and the wire doesn't find its way through to where you want it to go first time okay I have at the other end taken the tip adapter and the tip out of the torch so we've got every possible chance but it has to get past the drive roll uh, and out the other side through the outfeed guide which it's a bit hit and miss whether it will or won't. But I'll feel it in the wire as soon as I get to that point and I can stop without doing any damage to the wire. There we go, we're there. And as I said, it's not gone through first time. Oh, might well have done that. Yeah, right. Okay, it has actually made it all the way up to the drive roll, past the drive roll, and into the outfeed guide. Now, if you're not careful, it can push the neckliner right out of the torch as you're pushing it through. Uh, that hasn't happened in this case, it looks to be intact but what you do want to make sure is you want to have a look at the end and make sure that it hasn't pushed the neckliner out and then gone out round the outside of it so you do want to make sure that the wire is actually going going through it okay, and that's not gonna that's not gonna go it's obviously hit a bit of a uh, a bit of a snag so what I do at this point Take the neck off, very straightforward. Fit the neck liner, I can see that it's definitely gone over. Then refit the neck. Can be a bit of a fiddle, but you should only have to do this once. Now I can refit the diffuser, tip adapter, the tip, it's important that these are done up firmly, refit the shroud, cap that puts pressure on the pressure arm there. Inside the cap there are two spring loaded ball bearings. Doesn't matter which way around you put it, they just line up with two little detents here. Just pop it on like so and we're ready to go.